All right, so we are live. We are about to hear, oh no, I don't even have the other video pulled up. So everybody, normally I have uh, the video pulled up on the YouTube tab. So everybody let me know in the chat if you can hear us, if we're coming in loud and clear, that would be awesome. But today we are joined by Matt and Matt is not only an audiobook narrator, but he narrated all the King's Traders and I'm so excited for the audiobook to release. But before we even kind of get into all the questions I have for you, Matt, because I've got so many, um, I, <laughs> I wanted to turn it over to you to introduce yourself a bit and uh, and kind of just let us know a little bit about you. Well, hello, I'm Matt. Um, by day, I'm a, a sort of I'm a, I'm a social media manager and a community manager in the in the games industry. And by night, I, I record audiobooks and um, and do lots of funky things with this enormous microphone here. Um, it's been it's been really cool. It's a uh, it's a relatively fledgling thing for me. I've only been kind of doing audiobooks for around about um, six to eight months now, um, and it's something that I'm really really picky about. Like I don't I don't just sort of take anything that comes along. It's been it's been really really nice being you know uh, being able to afford to be a little bit choosy and uh, and I was so delighted when kind of I came across all the King's Traitors and then submitted that audition. And then, it, yeah, I mean, that was that was fantastic. It was a fantastic read. I'm a massive fantasy fan myself. Um, and it was so interesting. And the characters were amazing. And I just started hearing all their voices already. And I got I got very excited. And it just snowballed from there. Um, but yeah, like my, my, my background is actually uh, so so I, I sort of I've done a little bit of acting training, um, Lambda here in the UK. I was a member of the National Youth Theatre of the UK. Um, I studied English and theatre at uni. Um, so I was in, involved in a number of kind of like projects. And uh, but but audiobooks were were something that weren't on my radar until until pretty recently, to be honest. Um, and now they're slowly taking over my life. <laughs> they're just like seeping in from all directions. <laughs> exactly oh. that. So good. And I mean, before we get into it, I mean, I have a bunch of questions for you, but for everybody here in the chat, if you have questions for Matt as we go along, please, please, please do let us know. Drop them in the chat and we'll get to all of them at the end. Unfortunately, we have to run a little bit short today, like 45 minutes. So, um, but yes, please let us know any of your questions. But Matt, you said, you know, you're getting into it kind of more recently. What was the what was it that made you move over to audiobooks or what was it was it that made you discover audiobooks so i'd been kind of um i'm a bit of a creative magpie um my brain is always going ooh creative shiny thing ooh creative shiny thing and so sort of <laughs> hopping from one thing to the next um, well, because, sorry not to interrupt you but you write too right yeah so i i i actually i self published a I tend to write short fiction, like flash fiction, and I self-published a collection of that way back now. I think it was like 2014. Mm -hmm. um, and I'd always thought about kind of making that into an audiobook. Um, I still haven't done it. <laughs> I've been I've been too busy with other people's. So it's been great. Um, but I think I think basically what had happened was across the years, a number of people had just turned around and said to me because I've always been someone who does funny voices and like I'm that guy who's doing like silly anecdotes and ridiculous meme-tastic voices at parties and things like that going Man, you should you should do voiceover stuff or you should do audiobooks or you should you should use that voice and i'm just yeah. like ah oh uh, yeah just, just missing <laughs> that but i think it stacks up and kind of i had a really great experience doing uh, a radio play with a good friend of mine a few years back and it sort of it gave me the bug of kind of um yeah collaborative audio work um which then kind of it was petered out a little bit, but I started getting the bug. I started getting the like like the itch again, and my brain. I ha I wasn't really writing too much, and I was looking for something that you know I could I could do outside of work, something a little bit cathartic, something that would allow me to emotionally engage with mm -hmm. creative things. Um, and, and I thought about getting back into voice acting and getting back into VO, and actually, bizarrely, this is going to sound a bit weird. But audiobooks seemed like the most straightforward way of doing that, of sort of getting back in. And I spoke to a few people I knew who'd, who'd kind of made that jump. I um, I joined a couple of really, really great Facebook groups that, although kind of predominantly populated by guys from across the pond, like just so many guys in there who'd done several hundred audiobooks. Like the the amount of knowledge in in those groups is is insane. Mm -hmm. um, and 
I found it really inspiring, really inspirational. And so I set up my profile on, on ACX and I'd already started doing these little kind of um, these reels and demos. And yeah, it wasn't long before before I had kind of my first gig. Um, and and it just sort of snowballed from there. And, and I think, yeah, it's it's one of those things that <laughs> it sounds it sounds again, it sounds weird to say, but I sort of woke up one day and went, yeah, I want to do an audio book. Like this sounds yeah. like a good idea. I'm into it. <laughs> I mean, yeah, and and the thing is, like, I think once you once you have once I'm one of those people that once my brain gets fixated on that thing, I'm just like, cool, let's do that. Let's make that a goal for this year. Um, everything else kind of falls into space. Sorry, it falls into oh, place. Uh, I started doing the research, and it just snowballed from there. And the more I, the deeper I got into it, the more I kind of got it was going to be, yeah, no, we're doing this thing. Um, yeah, and that's very addictive. You had like kind of the background, like you mentioned. Um, the radio play and i saw that on your website and it was like a bit it, it was like an award-winning radio play like it sounds like you kind of built up to that also i just really wanted to ask you about that so like how was that experience and participating in that before going into the audiobook world did you feel i suppose more prepared or or are they two totally different things oh they're two completely different things um mainly because yeah with an audiobook your every single character and the narrator um and with that i was literally just 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 one sort of character um and again that was that was very collaborative it was a really it was a really great sort of team experience whereas doing audiobooks can often actually i think one of the challenges is that it's it's quite solitary um right. and although i mean it's it, it's it's a much more solitary act i think than than well at least that i found than than writing because you you can't talk to anyone because you're having to listen to yourself for many hours a day. And if you're if you're someone who, and this is this is a weird paradox. I don't always like the sound of my own voice, so that's a weird form of bizarre torture. Um, that's so interesting. <laughs> that's so interesting. An audiobook narrator that doesn't like the sound of their own voice. Okay, okay. <laughs> I mean, it's 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 a paradox. Like yeah, some days some days I hate it. Some days uh, I can't get enough of the sound of my own voice. Um, and I will talk at length. So bearing in mind the time limit today please please do stop me um but but yeah it's there were two very very different things but i think one of the great things about it was that it taught me decent mic technique um mm. you don't always have to be <laughs> I'm, I'm quite a big dude and i'm quite loud normally and so getting mic technique down was really really very very important there was a moment actually during the uh the radio play where i get very 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 angry and i'm quite shouty i think we had five mics and they're all dynamic mics so they've got fairly good noise cancelling on them um and i tripped the red on all of them, <laughs> and of them like all but one of them were pointed like elsewhere yeah and, yeah so trying very much trying to sort of uh like deliver good mic technique good breathing technique um which is even more important when it comes to audiobooks because mm -hmm. you know they're very much a marathon not a sprint for sure so just hopping back, I guess, moving back into your audiobook experience, we heard a little bit about ACX on, and ACX, for anybody who was not at the previous Indieverse episode, is the kind of, it's Amazon's audiobook platform. It's where authors can meet narrators and, and vice versa. So we heard a little bit about ACX on Friday. Could you tell us, is that the only platform you use to find authors to work with do you use other platforms and maybe a little bit about what your experience has been on acx and various other platforms yeah so for me um it pretty much revolves around acx at the moment but mm -hmm. i think one of the just because it's i mean it's, it's the largest right um amazon have have a strong grip on that market um but what i will say is that actually uh one of the one of the best things I learned in that group I mentioned sort of previously mm -hmm. is that I think you shouldn't be restricted by the platforms that you're kind of on. In fact, I think a lot of the time, once you're sort of a little bit established and you've got a couple of books under your belt, um, it pays to really go on Amazon or like go seeking out the books that you like and the genres that you like and the you have strong affinities with, and then bring those authors to ACX because I think. By and large, like working with you was was, was an absolute delight. But I think there there are some horror stories in those groups as well of like people who haven't who haven't really done their research or haven't necessarily or through no fault of their own necessarily just don't quite know how the audiobook process works. So having someone that can guide you through that basically, um, 
is can be can be really really helpful and then from from the narrator side of things it allows you to kind of forge that relationship really really early on be like i don't know if you've thought about you know converting this into an audio book but obviously quotes some numbers um audible's massive uh i just really really sell them on on that side of things would be like look i know how this works i can help guide you through it if if you like the sound of my voice which is obviously pretty key um uh you know i'd be more than happy to kind of bring you like uh help you find your feet on acx and i think the thing with acx is that it, it it's pretty streamlined the the whole process is is um is fairly well done it mm -hmm. could be yeah um Definitely. but but i think but i think a lot of it is is that is is kind of that i haven't had a problem necessarily um in terms of like sort of finding projects that i want to do but then again i'm not filling up my timetable or my schedule quite as densely mm -hmm. as, as some of the other narrators on that platform so you might find others like find away voices there are a lot of there are a lot of guys that forge direct relationships with publishers and i think that's the end goal generally is you want to be on the radar of major book publishers so when they outsource this stuff um you know you're getting the casting calls you're getting the auditions right or, or even you know better yet they're just contacting you directly and going we love your work we'd, we'd mm -hmm. love you to do this um but ACX is a great, great, great place to start. And I think that's that's one of the attractions. That's one of the reasons that kind of when I was looking around and going, I want to do something in audio, I went, audiobooks. Because ACX, having already gone through that process on um, you know, with with KDP and you know, Kindle Direct Publishing uh, yep. like several years back, it just seemed the most straightforward, clean route. I didn't have to think about it too much. I could just be like, Yep, I can do some demos, get a profile set up and start auditioning. And that's exactly what I did. That's so awesome. I mean, it just, yeah, Amazon, Amazon has its faults, but it's really opening up the audio world, which is really, really amazing. And I guess my next question with that a bit, and you kind of started on it a little bit, like, but what does your process look like? You started on kind of how you start connecting with folks. So when you, you know, have made that connection with an author and you're starting to move forward on the production of an audiobook. Could you walk us through your general kind of like start to, I suppose, finish process for that creation? Or does it differ per project? So it'll differ depending on whether it's kind of per finished hour. Um, mm -hmm. it'll, so it'll differ depending on the rate. Uh, royalty share tends to be slightly different to, um, to PFH, to per finished hour. Um, but actually, I've I've adapted it a little bit. Um, oh. So I think one of the one of the first things I do now is, you know, as soon as someone goes, "Hello, I liked your audition. I'd very much like you to take on this project." One of the first things I do is go, "Cool, let me send you this welcome pack," um, because because as I mentioned, like some people are you know really really very au fait and very up to speed when it comes to um, you know what it, what it takes to make an audiobook. Some are doing it for the first time. And now, because I have because I have the knowledge and the wherewithal to kind of be able to suggest things and just kind of make it right. non scary and very very easy for for authors, like it's that welcome pack. It's there. Hello, this is me. This is what I'm going to be doing. So I'm going to be delivering your first 15 minutes. This is your opportunity to give me massive load like loads of creative feedback and let's let's make sure that the script for that or, or the areas that you want to pull out for that include all the characters that you mm -hmm. want me to develop um and and that really is the best moment for you know working together and and collaborating on on, on how these characters come to life um and i always like to jump especially if it's if it's a longer book not necessarily so much for shorter ones but i like to jump on a call um you know as I did with you, and yeah. and just talk through the books. I think one of one of the best things about this is that you know you're taking someone's creation, um, and and I like to think I know a little bit about about that from the writer side of things. I know how precious those things can be, and I think it's really really important to to level with you know with an author and and try and get that rapport going and and find out how they see these characters, um, because although you kind of you're bringing your expertise from one side from from like the writer side, and I'm bringing my expertise from the narration side, you know. It's it's ultimately that that sort of first step should be a collaboration. Um, so yeah, it, it all kind of revolves, especially on ACX, it revolves around those those sort of first fifteen minutes, um, and then the welcome pack will basically detail. That's the point where you know creative feedback is is super super welcomed, and you've got a couple of rounds of approval, and let's get this right. Mm -hmm. um, and then from kind of then on, it's 
it's it's just me kind of doing my thing and that's kind of detailed out in that pack as well but i also like to send over character forms now just so you know if there are if there are kind of main characters that um the author sees in a particular light and definitely wants done in a particular way um i can be like yep can absolutely do that but also if it's not something i can do and i think this is really really important as well i can be like that's not an accent i can pull off reliably right. at that point it's kind of a case of you've got to decide as as a rights holder um how important that is to you mm-hmm. uh i think i think giving giving authors and giving rights holders that option really really early on super super important so um so yeah for me now it all starts with that welcome pack um which is a this is me yeah. loving this work this is how we're going to work together over the next few weeks and ultimately how I'm going to deliver your audiobook. Mm-hmm. Um, and then and then yeah, it's 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 a read through once for um for for familiarity. Um really, really getting into uh whichever sections they pull together for that first 15. Um and then once that's kind of approved, it's rereading through a couple of times, serious note taking. Um uh, yeah, and by the end of it, like is just it's a pdf with so many comments all over the place it's unbelievable you know the story inside and out people should just ghost uh hire you to ghost write their second <laughs> i'm struggling with mine right now <laughs> um yeah it's almost done it's just at the final editing phase i i struggle with it so hard so hard but yeah i really recall i mean we had right away you were like let's hop on a call let's chat about this book and that was so amazing and then i recall with the first 15 minutes um we did i think we did switch up the character like before you did the whole book i was like hey why i would like to hear these characters too and we had that whole discussion to start and i think that i mean i It was such a great process on my end. So thank you. And it just sounds like you're really kind of like really nailing it and everybody's really enjoying working with you. And it, yeah. Um, But you brought my characters to life um, in such an amazing way. So how, I guess my, my question is, is like, how do you work with, you mentioned the character sheets, like how do you work with authors to make sure their ideas and kind of vision for how the voices will come to life how do you how do you make sure that the author's interpretation is included but then also you're bringing in your expertise so how do you make sure that those two things two things mesh so i think i think you sort of mentioned it right there like the the main thing is making sure that everything that you want as an author is covered off in the in in that kind of first 15 minute or the first Mm. sort of sample for creative approval because the more stuff you can squeeze into that, the more I've got to work with and the more we can sort of have that collaborative feedback round as well. And then to me, it's, yeah, to me, it's conversation. Like it's, it's exactly as you described. It's let's let's make sure the, you know, the script for that or the sections that you want me to do are right. I'll go away and do them. And then we come back and we chat about them and we talk about kind of the creative direction. And that to me is the most fun bit, right? Like, and that to me is like, it's again. It's, it's it's like being back in that in that studio with with the guys doing that kind of radio play because it's very collaborative. It's incredibly creative, and you're just sparking off one another and seeing um, you know, and, and seeing where the ideas go. And that's and that's when you find that sort of central ground because I think as long as I'm I've been very fortunate in that I've worked with authors that are willing to trust, and I think that's mm-hmm. that's, that's really 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 great, and it's really 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 important. And again, just going back to thankfully, I've I've never had to deal with this. But there have been there have been some horror stories in the group. I'm sure there are on both sides in terms of like authors that have worked with with, um, with narrators who haven't been the best and narrators who've worked with authors who've been very controlling. Um, but I've been very, very blessed to, to work with authors that have either just been like, I trust you, go away, do it. Like, these are great, yeah. approved. Or, and and this is even better for me, I think, like authors like yourself that are, that are really kind of, they're passionate about their characters they're not afraid to take on new ideas, but they also want to get theirs across as well and and find that sort of middle ground and and just make the best audio that they possibly can. Yeah. And so I think that's that's really rewarding. Um, and I think ultimately those those sorts of uh, relationships and those sort of collaborations result in the best um, in the best end product. So so yeah, for me for me it's about nailing that that kind of first fifteen minute or that first sample. Um, leaping on a call and having a chat about it and 
yeah it's, it's just fun to be honest at that point it's really fun this is a this is a bit of an aside but i have new favorite characters in my book because of the way you narrated them <laughs> like i was like oh Which my ones? God. um so i used to i used to I used to really not like Ion, but that's because Ion started as a totally different, like Ion was not the Ion that is in all the King's Traders. And I think that kind of stuck with me. And I was like, I just never, I never really liked him. And like, for no reason, he's a good guy. He cares about his brother. Like he's, he's a really, I think he's generally a good person. I think I just had this historic version of him in my mind. And then when I heard him, when I heard you bring him to life, I was like, that version was almost erased. I was like, this is the Ion that I wrote for this version of the book. And I, anyway, so um, Ion for sure. And I love, there was another, there was another character that you did. And I was like, oh, wow, this is like, I mean, you did some really well and like kind of exactly, well, you did them all really well, but you did some of them exactly how I pictured it. And then some of them, oh, Aurelia was like, Aurelia was <laughs> Oh, she was perfect. Um, but I always really liked her. Anyway, but Ion, I think Ion was the one that hit me the hardest because, like I said, in a previous version of the book, Ion was a totally different person. And I don't think I ever fully shook that. I loved his, I love he, he and Kuba, him and Kuba, their relationship together is like my favorite thing ever. And it's just like so precious. But him alone, I was always like, I don't really like him but um anyway sorry that's a total aside but it really did it really did like bring I don't know it was so cool listening to my book in audio so I guess I mean I guess that begs the question like what's your favorite part of bringing a book to life because I'm sure it, like it, it must be magical every single time yeah I mean it's I think one of the best things is that you're basically reading aloud um you, it's I I was as a kid I was really really fortunate that my parents read to me aloud like at night times like um and I think that's it's one of the reasons I love books and I love reading so much um I love stories and I just remember that and I think I think that that feeds into a lot of it for me is the joy now being now being the narrator being the storyteller being the raconteur bringing bringing all that stuff to life um, but interestingly, I think, and I'm going to draw a parallel with writing as well. Like, it, as you mentioned, when you're kind of writing and a character begins to develop, and the character you end up with, at the, the the final version of the book is quite different. The same can be true of narration as well. Even if you do your research, even if you do your mm. your your due diligence, and and you're kind of and you're working with these characters as they develop, you know, you're you might discover things in your performance, right? And so there were there were a couple of things actually as well with Aurelia in particular um that I kind of I think I went back and just redid a couple of some of the earlier ones mm -hmm. um I mean part of that was I think I'd gotten her accent much much more stable um and I was like and I was re-listening to a couple of the early ones and I was like nope gonna have to gonna have to sort that out <laughs> um but also yeah as you as you as you naturally progress through I think and you embed more with these characters um you know you begin to know and understand them to a much greater degree and i think i think sometimes you know that makes you kind of not always but sometimes it's it's kind of worth going back and being like yeah i'm just gonna i'm just gonna fix that little bit because yeah. now i know her that little bit more i don't think that's how she would have done this yeah. um or said that line so that that to me is really 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 rewarding um I think yeah if you if if you do if you do all your sort of research and your prep right um you can kind of limit that a little bit which is mm. which is really great but like hitting your stride and it's the same it's the same with writing like you know when you've hit your stride in terms of in terms of narrating because it's just it's just flowing when you get a perfect take as well when you get a perfect chapter and you haven't had to sort of punch and roll too much and you're just like god that was a breeze that was yeah. awesome um that's always good whenever you get a chapter there where you don't have to do very many pickups that's always good as well um i am and this goes back to sort of i need to sort of uh i i want to go back and kind of do a little bit more coaching around the um uh some of my mic technique and some of my my vocal technique because mouth sounds have been creeping in a little bit more and although i can sort of edit those out in post like it's just oh gosh come on 
Um, it takes more time. And yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but the um, but yeah, the perfect run is is always a really, really, really good feeling as well in terms of like the technical side of things. Um, yeah. But honestly, it's it's when you feel you hit your stride and you you fully you're having fun with the, with with the text and you're having fun with the character. And I think I think that's the best when you when you've done your research and you've done your prep and you're just playing with with how things sound and with delivery and it's it's great and i think one of the one of the nice things is, is because because i am quite selective about this and because i only take on one project at a time yeah i have the time to be able to do that i think a lot mm-hmm. of guys if you're if you're crushing because you need um you need to get through a certain amount a month so you can mm-hmm. well so you can make the money that you need um that can sometimes be trickier um whereas i'm quite i think i think i'm quite lucky in that uh i can afford to take that little bit of extra time yeah. which is which is nice well i mean through all the king's traders it's clearly evident like it's just it's just beautiful it's stunning the end product is stunning and uh, yeah it's amazing um Anyway, I could gush about it forever. It was so cool. It was so cool for anybody in the comments who are maybe considering audio. It was the most surreal experience listening to your characters because also, Matt, I'm sure you probably work with different authors. Like I am not very good at picturing faces or voices. Like I just kind of have abstract visions of what my characters are and like my when I think, I think very much in like words and my own kind of voice in my head, if that makes sense. But I'm sure there's some people that you work with who are very visual or very audio. So they might, I don't know, have different approaches, but like I was really um, keen to hear your interpretation of all the characters. And then I was just like, it was, I was just blown away. Anyway, sorry, I'm just very excited about the audio. <laughs> Guys, it's coming at the end of the month, super stoked. Um, so, I guess my next question is kind of more of a technical one because we've talked about like your process and and what you really enjoy about creating audiobooks but what skills and or even technology do people need if they want to get into the audiobook game So um there's a very 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 he's award winning um he's a very very experienced audiobook narrator named Sean Allen Pratt who uh, I think he wrote an article, or it's, it, I think it's up on his website, and it's called "So You Want to Be an Audiobook Narrator." And there's a YouTube version of it as well. And and he his test is go to your bookshelf, any any bookshelf in your in your house, pick a book that you like, ideally. <laughs> um, what why would you own a book that you don't like? I don't know. Anyway, uh, pick a book that you like, and then go read it aloud for two hours a day for two weeks. And see if you still want to be an audiobook narrator and yeah and i think like there are various schools of thought on this like you don't have to do that but i tried that i didn't do it for two weeks i did it for one week um and it's a great it's a great test it's i, I think it's a great level of, of your kind of commitment and your 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 willingness and and also just it just it just gives you a greater understanding of what it takes to make an audiobook i think a lot of people don't realize that it requires a lot of stamina um, a lot of vocal stamina, and I think one of the one of the one of the biggest challenges with it versus kind of general VO or voice acting is that because it's such a marathon, um, your vocal you can feel vocal tiredness a lot lot more, and because it's just you as well, like, and you've got to go back to the top of each sentence when you when, if you if you screw up, like, it can it can become a little bit solitary and a little bit monotonous, and that and you can get into some bad habits. So it's really really important to have your your vocal technique right and your breathing technique right make sure you're drinking lots of water all that sort of good stuff um but i think i think yeah that the patience and the determination is is a big one so so sean's test is a really really good one because i think a lot of people might look at it and be like yeah it's just reading aloud i can do that that's gonna be fine and then they try it and they're like oh no um i'm horrible at reading aloud so i (laughs) never Like I can't get through a paragraph without stumbling at least five times, and then I get frustrated. And I'm like, I'm done. So I, yeah, yeah. I think, um, yeah, that's so. So that kind of that determination, that patience is is really important. I don't. Th- I think it's impossible. Uh, sorry, it's important to not have any kind of false illusions about it. Like 
you're not just going to start reading books and instantly become rich. That's really not how this goes. Mm-hmm. Like you got to be in it because you love reading, you love performance, and, and you love bringing this sort of thing to life. So, so from a, from a performance standpoint, that's really important. Um, a lot of guys will will say coaching is very, very, very important, and that can again that that runs the gamut from performance to the tech side of things. Um, I'm fortunate that so I spent um, in my in my day job. Uh, I, I hosted a podcast for for several years that kind of ran over a hundred episodes. So I had experience in terms of like dealing with sound files, mixing and mastering that sort of side of things, um, which has stood me in really really good stead when it comes to audiobook stuff. And like YouTube is littered with so 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 many kind of this is how you do this, right down to the really really nitty gritties of uh, programs like Audacity and Adobe mm-hmm. Audition and Studio One and things like that. So there are lots of resources out there, but making sure you put the time in to check those out and and get your skills up is is really really important as well um and then room treatment and and i sort of fell into this trap a little bit because i hadn't um i the room i'm in right now is a is a really reflective room there's there's no carpet uh, the curtains aren't that heavy um and there's lots of reflective surfaces mm-hmm. uh, so you can have the best microphone in the world but a a really great mic in a poorly treated room is going to sound worse than a rubbish mic in a really well treated room. So making sure you get some audio foam, and I've got some behind me now, um, is super important. Um, yeah, and hitting up a couple of the guys who know what they're who know what they're talking about. There's a great uh, there's a great guy in the US called Don Barnes who will literally give you you can send in audio files of just like your raw audio, and he'll give you a quick free 15 minute consultation and basically tell you. You just sort this out, this out, and this out. That's and awesome. He's brilliant. He's absolutely brilliant. Yeah. And then, and then, and then he has long, like, longer courses, and you can schedule one on ones. And but, but he is amazing. And he was literally just like, "You got a great voice, but yeah, you need to sort that reverb out right there. Just get some paneling down the sides." Like, and I, I literally, so I had, a, I had a chat with him, and then I had a chat with a guy based over here, um, who who basically does sort of professional grade acoustic solutions for like businesses and all that sort of stuff. Mm-hmm. I got the webcam out. And I basically just swung it around the room and he was just like, yep. So you want paneling there, 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 there. Um, I was like, you just trying to sell me on the paneling? And he's like, no, no, trust me. Um, but it was good to <laughs> correlate those two, those two things and yeah. work out what I actually needed. And it, it doesn't have to be super expensive. It doesn't have to break the bank. Um, and I think it's perfectly like it's, 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 it's really acceptable to just, start basic start with what you can get hold of like clear out that closet and make it and make a nice little kind of like sound dampened um place and then just work your way because if people like your voice and they like your work they're gonna want you to do stuff Mm -hmm. um and as that snowballs yeah you can upgrade to to better mics and and kind of improve improve the surroundings that you're in um but yeah room room treatment is is vital even if it's just heavy blankets and a mattress here and there or like like a yeah little blanket fort um it makes it makes a world of difference Mm -hmm. yeah i mean it sounds like so i didn't until very recently like just maybe a few months before you know we connected to get all the king's traders done on audio i had no idea about mics. I had no idea about room treatments. And I do have a mic now and I put like blankets down on my floor when I'm filming YouTube videos sometimes just to try and dampen the, the I don't even know what it's called. I don't know any of the technical terms. I saw it on a video um, because I, like my house ends up being very, um, like there's a lot of echo or reverb. I'm not sure what it's called. So it's it's really interesting, all the technical pieces that go into it and then also all the skill that goes into it. And yeah, it's just super, super interesting to me. Um, so we only have a few questions left. So I just want to uh, know, let everybody know in the chat that if you do have questions, please let us know. We are going to be running a little bit short today because I do, uh, this is my lunch break. <laughs> um, but I was wondering, Matt, do you have, like, have you faced any, I mean, other than me being, like, super late and behind on absolutely every single one of our time, <laughs> I apologize. But um, what challenges have you, have you encountered any challenges so far in your journey as an audiobook narrator? And maybe if not any challenges, do you have any fun stories that you can share with us? So 
I think um, so. Vocal tiredness is probably the biggest challenge, mm. um, especially if you're out of practice in terms of, or like you haven't used it consistently, your voice consistently in a while. So um, as well as being an audiobook narrator, I used to be a metal singer. Um, Whoa, and, okay. vocal tiredness, and, for, tiredness uh, for sure. I'm a big Killswitch Engage fan. So lots of, lots of shouty loudness. Um, but I actually ended up with a, uh, a polyp on my vocal cords and I had to have vocal surgery. And coming back from that was very, very, very eye-opening in terms of like, this is how you need to properly look after your voice. These are the mm. exercises and the warm-ups that you need to do. This is how you should be, you know, anytime you're doing anything that's over and above kind of normal conversation, be doing these exercises, be doing like, be taking care of your voice. So being mindful of that is something that I think, you know, that's that tiredness and, and you know, the fact that your main tool, your main instrument is is inside you like something that you've got to look after i think i think that's a challenge that you have to be mindful of um i think the uh so i've mentioned the solitary nature of it it's that's something that i think you know is can be a bit of a challenge as well like it's it's not a it's not a really particularly a group activity especially after after you've after you've locked that first 15 minutes i'm basically going away and i'm and i'm spending many 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 hours just making it at that point um and we can touch and like it's good to touch base and everything but it's still it's still quite a solitary experience so it's important to break out of that and not go too mad when when making an audiobook um in a, in a similar sense i think uh to, to the vocal tiredness protecting against colds flus those things can wreck a timeline massively mm -hmm. um i've been <laughs> i've been shielding quite significantly during covid um just because yeah I'm, I'm i'm super super keen to to retain vocal health um and and so yeah that that all kind of feeds into it um being mindful of, of uh, your space and your surroundings so i get i can get it gets quite loud especially when you're doing dramatic scenes i share a flat complex with a few other people um so just trying to be mindful of you know where you're placing your recording times and although like i've got i've got decent sound dampening in the room that i'm in and decent sound well relatively decent soundproofing um you can still hear stuff when i get loud <laughs> so yeah. so being mindful of just like your hours and things like that and also you know i share a flat with my fiance i'm trying to be mindful of her stuff as well because we're both working from home so that side of things as well um so yeah, it's it's any challenge. The, the challenges come with stuff that can interrupt or just sort of derail um, the process. I guess uh, weather is another one. To be honest, we've had a few very loud storms, and you can just like the noise floor for for, for the recordings I've been doing recently. Like I've managed to get sort of the room tone and the noise floor under about so it's sort of minus sixty, minus sixty five, and the storm just sort of started registering up above kind of minus thirty. I'm just like, oh no. So you can hear I'm doing I'm doing this really sort of quiet, quite tender romantic scene. And this is just like this rah, 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 in the background <laughs> of just this storm going nuts. And it's just like thanks. <laughs> I recall I recall you sent me an email when there was there was a bunch of storms happening in the UK. I forget. I it must have been, I don't know, February, I don't even recall. But you sent me an email and you're like, hey, there's like it's been storming all week here because I, I, I can imagine that that must just shut production down because storms are loud. Yeah, annoyingly, it's not even it's not actually even the storm quite often, but we've got um our building the the it's about to get weirdly technical the um the the roof awning uh it sort of overlaps in such a way that you get massively fat raindrops that come down onto onto the windowsill and yeah. it's that that's the thing that you can just you can just hear this tapping in the background no way that's thing. so funny like, oh no and you and i can kind of i can get rid of most of it yeah kind of noise removal but you don't want to do too much there because you don't want to sound sort of like super artificially processed and Mm -hmm. yeah so sometimes you just have to be like fine fine whatever I'll whatever storm, like, Zeus is angry so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna give up for the day <laughs> yeah oh gosh that's so funny that it's just the little the rain droplets um all right so I've got one last question for you but I'm gonna kind of combine it with Sage's question here so Sage is asking Ooh. how does one get into audiobook narration so I'm gonna switch that up a little bit because we talked to it about it just a little bit so like I'm going to switch this up to being like, how, what's the first step somebody should take if they want to get into audiobook narration? And then 
the follow-up question to that, uh, which is coming from my end, is what advice would you give to somebody who wants to get into audiobook narration? So first step and a piece of advice. So I think the first thing is listen to audiobooks and find ones that you like and find narrators that you like and analyze what it is that you like about them and and what it is that you like about their performances and so on. The second part of that is kind of in tandem with 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 the Sean Allen Pratt test is record yourself reading something for for five ten minutes and see how it stacks up um, and then be ruthless and interrogate every single bit of the performance that you just did uh, and ask for feedback on it like I in the same way that you might go out to beta readers and get and get feedback on on writing I think it's really 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 important to get to get feedback on on narration as well I think that's that's a good that's a good point at which you can then once you have that you can then kind of evaluate and be like okay right i need to i need to sort this out maybe on a technical standpoint in terms of like the room tone so i can cut down the reverb or, or whatever it might be i need some performance stuff so i can maybe a little bit of coaching so i i can sort of iron out the, the issues that i've got here and here um and and then kind of kick on from there i think i think that's those two things kind of in tandem like basically doing a lot of listening and then doing a lot of listening to yourself um that's that's a really good place to start with with kind of the performance side of things um more kind of broadly uh i think yeah get some demos because ulti ultimately what, what you want to do is you want to be able to to showcase your skills the only way that you can really do that is through auditioning and before people start coming to you, you're going to have to start going to them. But it never hurts to have examples of your work, um, examples of what you can do, um, and kind of getting those in place as kind of early as possible in the best possible shape they can be is super important. But you only really get to that stage when you kind of know who you are as your uh, as a narrator and what you're capable of and what your voice is like, and 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 that can only really be done by by intensive listening, to be honest. Um, so that's what I would say. Yeah. I hope that helps from a kind of, yeah, from a starting point standpoint. But in terms of advice, um, like, to be honest, actually, a few people have asked me this and uh, the blog post that I was going to write on it is long, long, long overdue. Um, but I think there are a couple of, and, and the link to this will be in the blog post when I eventually write it. There are a few Facebook groups that are immensely helpful when it when it comes to this. There's a website, I think, called Narrator's Roadmap, which is immensely, immensely helpful when it comes to this. And just find, yeah, as I say, find the guys that you like, um, find guys that have done it and have done it for three, four, five hundred books, guys like Sean, and, and listen to what they have to say, read what they have to say. A lot of them have YouTube channels as well. Um, take on board their advice um and yeah don't be under any illusions that it's 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 a long it's a long road and um and books take a while to do <laughs> but but if you love if you love reading and you love reading out loud and you love the performance aspect of that um yeah i think i think it's 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 a it's a discipline that's relatively easy to get into because of you know the sort of um the self-publishing platforms and the sort of, I guess, the self-marketing platforms that we now have available. And, and ACX is a, is, is a great part of that. So get a profile, get some demos on there and and go from there and then start auditioning. Oh, so exciting. You're making me want to be an audiobook narrator, but like I never could be. I never could be. I'm horrible. I don't know. You don't know that. Like try, try the film test. <laughs> I would need a lot of practice. All right, so the next question is coming from Natalie. So Natalie is asking if a book has an unusual, has unusual, see, I can't read out loud. If a book has unusual <laughs> things that an author wants to sound in a certain way, how can I let the narrator know about them phonetically or with specific audio recordings of the names? Uh, both. Uh, to be honest, I, I find it really useful to have the audio recordings. So I think, so when, when, for example, um, we had our phone call, Keelan. Yeah. Um, I think I think I asked you. I asked you directly. How do I pronounce this? Um, and or how would you like me to pronounce this? Um, and it's great to just hear that. I'll repeat it a few times. I'll probably record it myself onto onto a little snippet just so I can remind myself later on, um, if need be. Uh, but but yeah, I think I think for me that goes into 
that very much should be within that kind of on ACX at least. Those sorts of things should definitely be in the first fifteen. So mm -hmm. that's those are the sorts of things that you absolutely want to include there um, at that kind of stage. And and I think it's I think it's absolutely crucially important as well. Like um, so have a, have a chat with the narrator to be honest um, and find out what would work best for them as well. But definitely don't leave it up to them if it's super important to you. Um, but yeah, I love audio recordings, but I'll leap on the phone and just be like, how do I pronounce this? I'm confused about this. Um, and I think having that conversation is, yeah, it's really, really important to have at the earliest possible stage. Especially with fantasy that has just like yeah. the longest. <laughs> yeah. um, awesome. We have a couple more questions coming in, guys. I might not be, we might not be able to take all of them because I do have to get back to work. This is my lunch break. <laughs> um, but Eva is asking, so Eva just got here and Eva is asking, what mic do you use? Uh, this is a Shure SM7B. Um, it's a dynamic mic, which, so you have two types of mic usually. Um, the dynamic ones tend to be, tend to have a little more noise cancelling on them. They only really activate when noise comes close to them. Um, mm -hmm. but they don't often give as much colour uh, as, as diaphragm mics. Um, this one tends to be used a lot for podcasts. Um, you'll see... Uh, yeah, you'll see this pop up loads. Like it's a favorite of YouTubers, streamers, everything like that. For me, so I live quite near Heathrow, uh, which is a major, uh, yeah, major airport here in the UK. It just it allows me to have that little bit more kind of noise cancelling. It just sort of goes hand in hand with the, um, uh, you know, with the sound dampening that I've got around me. And I and I love it to be honest. The the condensers that I want to get are quite a bit more pricier than this. Um, and and to be honest, like I've had such good feedback off of the projects that I've done with this that. I haven't felt the need to change it up yet. Um, and I kind oh, of it get it. sounds great. It sounds like I, it's perfect. <laughs> it's mellifluous tones. Um, so, so yeah, this is this is an absolutely fantastic mic. I love it. Um, you'll see lots of uh, lots of narrators use them. Lots of podcasters use them. Um, you will find if you can if you can dampen effectively, um, a condenser will do you better because you'll you'll have a little bit more range and a little bit more color to your voice um and i think you know you can get a decent condenser uh for a, for a couple for a couple hundred um you don't have to spend yeah don't don't go spending a grand on a mic um but uh but i love this it it does the job for me and and it's it's great when it comes to kind of active noise cancelling could you say the name of it again because i might definitely come back and and try and get it one day Hopefully. <laughs> sure. So it's it's the Shaw SM7B. Shaw uh, SM7B. Got it. Perfect. SM7B. The the larger, more bulbous cousin of the SM58, which is the singer's microphone. Awesome. No, Natalie had a follow up question for the full lowdown of your equipment, but I'm not sure we have time for that because I think you've got the dampeners too, and um, I don't know. Is there? or I guess like, do you want to give us a brief like list so people can go and look it up? <laughs> so very, 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 very quickly, because this is such a high gain, so this is a pretty high gain mic. It requires a lot of gain to to give it the juice that it needs to produce right. sound. Um, so you, you need, you need, you basically need two things generally. You need a microphone, well, three things, microphone, audio interface, and a computer. Um, the audio interface I have is a Focusrite Scarlett 2i2. Uh, which is pretty common um, and is relatively inexpensive for what it is. Uh, some people have had some problems with the Scarlets, but I've I've never had any issue with it. Um, but I do use something called a cloud lifter. Um, oh, let me just see if I can bring it up. It's this little blue box here um, that, particularly for this microphone, uh, just it gives it just that little bit more gain, so mm -hmm. so I can sound as smooth as possible without having lots of crackling happening underneath. Um, and then the audio foam, I guess, just basically, um, yeah, chat to your to to a local uh, to a local store. I guess like that's that's exactly what I did. Um, I went online, found a few that delivered in in the middle of all this madness, um, and just ran them up and had a chat with with them about kind of my room, my surroundings, what would be best. Um, and they gave me some great advice. Uh, so yeah, and then from a software standpoint, I actually use Adobe Audition um, mm -hmm. in combination with uh, RX7, which is a really, really, really powerful plugin that you can use for noise cancelling, mouth declicking, all that sort of good stuff. 
Um, and there are a load of great um, tutorials online. Uh, and actually, Don Barnes, the guy that um, I mentioned earlier, who does the sort of free 10, 15 minute consultations, um, he has an entire course on how to on how to use RX7. Uh, but he tends to use um, uh, a digital audio workstation called Studio One rather than Audition. Mm -hmm. um, but you can use, you can easily use. Uh, there's a program called Audacity, which is free. Um, that's and that's and that's what I basically use to to edit and mix all the podcasts that I used to make and and some of my sort of early flash fiction as well before I kind of um, made the jump up to audition. Do you have affiliate links? Eva's asking so you can get paid when everybody goes and buys this equipment. <laughs> uh, I, I don't actually. <laughs> um, Put them on your website. Ooh. But uh, yeah, I'll go. I'll go grab an Amazon one right now, and uh, and yeah, I'll stick. I'll stick it in the blog post when it eventually goes live. But um, also, everybody, just so you know, Matt's website can be found down below. We have one last question, um, and I apologize. I I'm gonna have to like sprint right away after this question, but it is Eva is asking, have you had to do a narration for a piece that you thought was poorly written? I. You said you could be a little bit more selective or like have you ever been in that case where maybe it's not poorly written but maybe it's something you don't want to do um no is, is kind of the short answer to that and the longer answer is uh that actually the audition scripts tend to tell me everything i need mm. um i've i've read a lot that were very very poorly written um and just kind of noped my way out of there um and there have been you know there's also stuff as well that kind of you read and you're like did they mean to write it like that? And and once or twice I've had to check with the author. I've been like, "Am I all right to fill this in?" Because generally, I think it's 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 bad etiquette to kind of change the script in any way as a narrator. You're writing, you're you're reading things as they're written. Mm -hmm. But every once in a while, like, it's worth asking the question and being like, "This this sentence doesn't make any sense. Um, can I rearrange it?" And or, or did you mean this? And just and just and just kind of double checking, um, because it might have just been something that slipped the proofing. It might have just been something that yeah, just no one no one happened to pick up on. And I think it's it's just courtesy to ask before before you do it. Um, but but no, thankfully I've I've never had to really kind of record anything that I didn't like or I thought was 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 bad. Um, because yeah, I think I've I've encountered audition scripts like that, and I've just kind of walked away and been like, nah, I'm not feeling that. Um, so yeah, I've been very fortunate, really. I'm glad you didn't walk away from all the King's traders. That makes me feel good about my writing, and also I'm just happy. That was great. <laughs> like it was, it was awesome. Like that, that it was great fun to do. So, yeah. um, awesome. Well, Matt, thank you so much for joining today. I really, really appreciate it. Everybody well, who's here, and everybody who's watching later, you can find Matt's website linked down in the description box below. If you need an audio book done. Could not recommend Matt more. Definitely <laughs> reach out. Um, and Matt, I'll turn it over to you for for an outro. Yeah, I just want to say a massive, massive thank you to to everyone who's who's tuned in. Like, um, if you want, if if you have any further questions as well, like, feel free to hit me up on on Instagram or Twitter at Fuzzy Pixels. Um, and yeah, I'm I'm so very, very, very excited for for book two in the series. I can't I can't wait. Oh, I can't wait too. And um, all the King's Traders is going to be dropping on audiobook. It, the one thing with ACX is you don't really have <laughs> so end of August, ideally August thirty first. If if it happens before end of August, if it happens before August thirty first, I'm not going to publicize it because I want it on August thirty first, which is the one year anniversary of all the King's Traders. So you will hear about it on August thirty first. Um, but Matt, thank you so much for coming today, and I really appreciate the time. And I'm sorry, everybody, but we have to split because I have a call to get on. But this was episode seven. I didn't even show this at the beginning. I got this new light box for my nice. indie, my Indieverse episodes. So um, it was episode seven of the Indieverse. Thanks for joining, everybody. And we actually have an episode coming out tomorrow at six p.m. EST. It is just not scheduled yet, but it will be here. So thanks so much, everyone. Bye. Cheers, guys.